Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to finish off this guitar. So if you haven't been here uh, for the rest of the series, this was a cheap Squire guitar that I got for, you know, under 200 bucks Canadian, which is, I don't know what that is in American, probably like a chocolate bar or something. And I took it apart painted it. Well, I painted it a few times, but for the purposes of this series, did this paint job on it. So if you haven't seen that stuff, I'll link up the disassembly and that paint job in the description. Check it out. It's uh, probably pretty important for you to know <laughs> if you're planning on doing this. Then in the last video, we replaced all of the electronics uh, and the pick guard, all of the electronic components with this craziness. I don't know if that's focusing properly, but I've got three push-pull um, dials, three-way uh, three toggle, a momentary kill button, the five-way blade switch, and three mini toggles. So tons of options. This does some crazy stuff. Uh, huge thank you to Troy from Noise Guitar Mods. I'm going to link his eBay as well in the description. Check him out. He's the one who did this. This is well beyond my capabilities. Everything on the back of this pickguard is super clean, and yeah, it's generally awesome. So thank you, Troy, for doing this for me. Uh, there's no way I could have done this without you. I would have at best just been able to change out the pickups that were on there. I think I've done one push pull knob and uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not good at it. So glad to have somebody else take care of that one for me. <clears throat> so last video, like I said, we replaced the electronic components. I said I was going to demo it in this one or have somebody who actually doesn't suck a guitar do it. That didn't work out. So it'll be me. But first I have to set it up. Everybody knows that. And a few of you were kind enough to point that out to me when I put it together last time. So thanks for having faith in me, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to set it up now. So that's what we're going to do at the beginning of this video. And then we'll demo it. Let's uh, bring the camera in over here and you guys can check out how the setup is done on these. All right, let's start with the simple stuff. You've got some springs in the back cavity here that regulate how your tremolo arm works. Um, you may not use a tremolo arm. I know I don't. For those of you who don't like big words, that's the whammy bar. Um, I'm going to tighten these up a little bit. I would suggest that you do the same. Just give them a little crank. We, we, we loosen them off so that we can get those springs in there easily. All right. So they don't need to be that loose and they really shouldn't be. So you're going to want to yeah, go in and just tighten those up a little bit. Make sure that that's nice and solid. How tight you do them depends on how much you're going to, like, yeah, how much you use your whammy bar, essentially, and what configuration they're in. This is the configuration that I prefer for mine, but again, I like mine reasonably tight because I don't want this pulling up and down. I never use it. I have a floating tremolo on a guitar that I, that I do that stuff on. I'm not going to do it on a vintage tremolo. It just, I don't find that it works all that well. Next up, it's very, uh, very important that your strings the way that they are sitting matches the radius of your fretboard. So for this, you're going to need some radius gauges. Uh, you can try and eyeball it. It's definitely not ideal. Radius gauges are the way to go if possible. In order to adjust it, you're going to move the saddles. So you're also going to need a screwdriver that works on the saddles. Okay. The saddles, if you haven't messed with it, when you took it apart and you're putting the same bridge back on should be set up properly. If not, if you get the guitar set up at any point, they will do that for you. So it's not always <laughs> worthwhile to set it up on your own. But it, it, what you need to do is find the radius of your fretboard. And then again, you can check your strings against that. So they make these notched radius gauges, which you can use to check the radius of your fretboard once your strings are on. Or alternatively, you can just get a couple of these ones. Okay. And you can make sure that you remember to check it before you put your strings on. So the use of these is very straightforward. You want this to, to match up kind of down in this area. I like to do it at the bottom and at the 12th fret, just to kind of see where I'm at. Now, I already know what the radiuses are. Radiuses? Radii? Anyway, I know what I'm dealing with on this guitar already, so I'm just confirming that I am correct about that. But I'm not going to tell you what it is because it does change a little bit from guitar to guitar. I don't necessarily trust them. 
Uh, so just make sure you check or look it up for your particular guitar. Now this one was set up when I bought it and I'm lucky enough that it is still set up. The radius on these strings does match the radius here. It's sometimes easier to tell if you use one of the radius gauges that slides underneath the strings. I have those as well, but you know, I, I'm assuming a lot of you aren't going to have all of this stuff. So just these ones, technically, like I said, you can get away with just using these guys, the very basic ones, if you remember to measure that before you put your strings on. If you do need to make adjustments, like I said, they're on the saddles. Okay, I'm having trouble with this screwdriver now. That's that's exactly what I wanted to have happen. Anyway, um, the saddles have set screws right here, two on each. So you're going to use those, tighten them up to bring the saddle up, loosen them to bring the saddle down, and then you can use those to create that radius there. All right, next, your pickup height. Your pickup height is going to determine how loud your strings are, but let's keep in mind your pickups have magnets in them, so if you get them too close to the strings, it can affect how they vibrate. You do not want to do that. My pickups, I've already kind of adjusted. This one's actually, actually sitting a little high. Um, but, yeah, you, you're going to want to bring them up so that they're relatively close, so that you can get them louder and you don't have to crank your amp so hard, or so high, rather. So right in that range is kind of where I like mine. I generally, on a guitar like this, have them sit about halfway between the guard and the string itself, but that's kind of the general concept of those. Uh, you just you raise them up to make them louder. You can actually imbalance them by raising one side higher than the other because it's a screw on each side, so you tighten to lift it up. If you wanted to have a louder bass area, you could do that. I don't think it's a good idea, but hey, you know, people do things that I don't think is a good, are a good idea all the time, and sometimes they have awesome results. So really, who am I to say? You also need to adjust your string height, all right? So once you've got that radius, you know, that's, that's all fine and good, but if your strings are way off your fretboard, then that is not good. Now, one way to adjust your string height is to change the height of your saddles and lower them if you've got a fairly straight neck and they're high there. But generally speaking, what you're going to end up with is an area in the middle of the neck or something like that where the strings are either touching uh, and creating fret buzz or they're too high. The way to adjust that is with the truss rod adjustment. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do one because, first of all, this guitar doesn't need one and I don't like to play with truss rods unless I have to. Uh, and second, there are so many bloody videos out there on how to do a truss rod adjustment. I'm not going to waste your time with it. You can just check them out if you need to. Um, but generally speaking, you want them fairly flat. The, the only issue here is you, you do need some equipment to be able to do a truss rod adjustment perfectly. So this guitar, for example, has a 25 and a half inch scale length. So what I would use for this, first of all, is a notch straight edge built for a 25 and a half inch scale length. You can make your own straight edge by cutting chunks out of a ruler if you want, but you'll note that these notch straight edges are actually quite thick, they're eighth inch. So, you know, just using a thin ruler isn't as good. And you adjust your neck with a truss rod adjustment just by tightening or loosening your truss rod, depending on what situation it's in, to make it perfectly flat like this. And mine is almost perfectly flat. Uh, it's got just a hair of bow to it, and that's how I like it. So generally, your neck's going to have just a touch of bow, which you get by loosening off your truss rod from that straight position just slightly so that you have a little bit of extra space in here and you don't get fret buzz. I've already tested this guy. I don't have any fret buzz, um, so I'm not making any adjustments to mine. But generally speaking, that is how you do it. If your frets are all perfectly level and everything, which these ones probably are, you can kind of get away with using just a ruler across the frets if you want. All right, so once you've done that, uh, you would then check your, uh, your fret height using a, th you know, a thickness gauge. Um, a feeler gauge is what it's called. Again, that, that's getting pretty complicated. If you're getting into that area, you're going to want to watch some tutorials on full setups that are more in-depth than this one, or take your guitar in and get it set up. 
Um, generally speaking though, I find that you can just do it based on what's comfortable. I do use feeler gauges on mine sometimes, but I don't use the same depth that a lot of people do. So I'm not going to tell you that that's the way to do it because hey, maybe that's not how you like it. Anyway, I'm going to do a quick demo here um, with the usual caveat that I'm not a very good guitarist. I spend more time pissing around working on them and painting them and whatnot than I do actually playing them. So we'll do, yeah, a little bit, a uh, little bit of playing with this massive number of settings that we have here, and you can kind of hear a general concept of what it sounds like uh, in the hands of an amateur. And we'll go from there. And by we'll go from there, I mean that'll be basically it. So hopefully the mic picks this up all right. Let's get going uh, on the part that I'm probably going to regret later. I think there may actually be too many settings for me to go through here.
So as you can see, this guy puts out a ton of sounds, probably too many for me to even run through, and it's awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed, uh, and I hope you, you like the paint job. But if not, hey, you can always do whatever you want with the paint job. There are tons of options out there, more than I could ever go through, although I'm trying slowly, bit by bit. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so it's easier for other people to find, and subscribe if you haven't already. As always, have a good one. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.